Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this small max. Um, I've got a very quick brief on uh, game facilitation, of which there are some key elements uh, safety um, and management. So, um, several key elements uh, game safety and management in particular. Um, this is targeted specifically, or more specifically, to the coaches playing, uh, coaching playing rugby. Uh, 11s, 12s, 13s, uh, and in particular those with under 13s who've got contested scrums. Um, so there is a process we have to go through in order to keep ourselves as coaches and referees safe, as well as our players. And it goes, it's all about the engagement process and setup of the scrum. So we're all familiar with the three calls, crouch, bind, set. Um, but the other key things is that we have a nice steady platform between all of those calls. So prior to starting the game, if you have contested scrums, you must do a pre-match with both front rows, even if it's your own team. And in that pre-match, you'll simply get the boys and girls out and go through your scrum setup and engagement process or sequence, which will look something like this. Crouch. And when both packs are in a nice steady crouch, you'll then call bind. When both packs are nice and steady, then you'll call set. Again, when they're nice and steady, you will then tap the halfback on the shoulder or the back and they will then feed the scrum. If at any stage through that process, the scrums don't look right or are moving, you blow your whistle, bring them up and start again. All right, and you can also tell the boys and girls that if they want to, if they get down there and they're not comfortable, hang on ref, start again. And then once you get into the game, then every scrum you set, you must go through that process. And you'll find that the boys and girls will queue off it really well and set nice good scrums for you. Um, the other part of safety is in tackle. And there are two elements to this in particular. One is the high tackle, and the high tackle line for small blacks is the armpit. It used to be called the nipple, but we refer to the armpit now. Um, and so anything above the armpit is considered high in small black rugby. Even if it's a scrag on the jersey to pull people down, if that's above the armpit line, we should be deeming it so and penalising accordingly. Right, so we're trying to encourage the boys and girls to have good tackle technique. It takes them a bit of time to get confidence to get the shoulder on and drive through, but that's where good coaching will come in. And once that starts happening, we're going to have games that are much easier to referee uh, and pertaining to the tackle. So uh, get on top of it early. If you've got some high tackles, get on top of it early. Deal with it as you see it and then you'll find the boys and girls will get better and better as you go. The other key tackle with, uh, that we must consider is the tip tackle, which uh, is becoming more and more prevalent in rugby at all levels, and, and we are getting some incidences in, in, incidents in junior rugby. So here's, here, here's the deal. If we consider this a player, if a player lands on their head or neck, uh, in a tip tackle, they must be removed from the field, no matter what age, all right? If they're sort of in that shoulder area, minimum five metres rest, uh, and just be on the horizontal minimum penalty. If you are unsure of what level of sanction it is, then you should be going firmer rather than softer, all right? Um, so it's really, really important that we stamp out tip tackles in all rugby, uh, and the best time to start making our players aware that it's unacceptable as in junior rugby, all right? So head, neck, off, shoulder, neck, minimum yellow, and just be on the horizontal, minimum penalty, all right? Um, so those are the key things around safety, and then we move into this concussion uh, thing. So um, in your resources, you have these concussion cards, as a reference, and in there are some individual cards which you can give to uh, parents, uh, guardians, which go through signs and symptoms of concussion. Now, concussion is pretty rare in junior rugby, 
um, but it can happen as impact increases. So what we're asking you to do as a referee is in conjunction with coaches is to make pragmatic decisions around boys and girls who get a heavy knock to the head. Um, often it's just they get a bit of a fright and then a bit of a shock um, and just need a break. But if they are showing genuine signs of concussion such as memory loss, nausea, instability, blurred vision, and just to name a few things, then it's really important that those boys and girls are removed from the field and then taken care of from there. What we're finding is that most coaches now have bought into this and they are helping referees with those decisions and most people are not taking the risk. They're saying if a boy or girl's had a, had a heavy head knock, um, they're taking them off, giving them a break and making sure that they're safe. Um, if you are referring a game of rugby where a coach is reticent to remove a player and you know that this player um, has probably had quite a head knock and maybe um, concussed, then under law as a referee, you must remove that player, even if the coach doesn't want to. But by and large, we're finding that most people are buying into it and making sure the boys and girls are really safe in this area, uh, which is great. And that's happening across all levels of rugby as well. All right, so please refer to your concussion card um, so you have a bit of knowledge around what concussion may look like if it happens. So that's basically the, the key safety things uh, for you as a referee if you're facilitating a game of rugby. I just want to refer to law now uh, because I haven't got time to go through the laws of junior rugby, but in your resource that you'll pick up, uh, here's a pocket or bag card which has got the key laws associated with your grade. Now, you'll have also a resource book which goes through some coaching things and the key laws also with your grade. It is really important that if you're transitioning from one grade, so for example, beginning rugby into uh, learning rugby, or learning rugby into playing rugby, that you familiarize yourself with those laws because they are, they are quite different between the different grades. So if you're going to referee and or coach, please familiarize yourself with those laws. Uh, and then you add those into the other key rugby laws that you're familiar with as a rugby person, and um, you're good to go in terms of the law that you need to facilitate a junior game of rugby. So please look at the resources. And the next thing we go into is you've got your resource, your, your safety aware, and now you have to get out on the field and get into it. So there's some key things that are going to hold you in good stead for management. The first thing is your whistle, all right? Try and get a decent whistle. All right, so for $10, you can get a decent whistle. If you spend $20, you get a really, really good one, a Rolls-Royce whistle. But here's the, key, here's the key thing to the whistle. It's really important you have variety. So there's three key whistles you need to learn before you get out onto the field. <clears throat> and they pertain to different calls. So you've got long and loud, loud, moderate length, short, moderate volume. So let's go through those again. So long and loud would be start the game and try. Loud, moderate length for a penalty or maybe a free kick. Short and moderate volume for a scrum infringement. All right, so it's really important we have a different whistle for those because what that does, it keeps the boys and girls in tune with you and they stay alert to your whistle. It also keeps the sideline informed about what you're doing because the worst case scenario is a monotonic whistle like this. Start of the game. Penalty. Free kick. Scrum. Try. So same whistle for everything. People start switching off the whistle and become immune to it. So when you blow it, you're not getting the good response that you should be. So if you vary it, <coughs> bit of variety, people know there's different things happening in the game when you're involved as a referee. So really important to practice those three whistles. The next thing that follows is once you've blown the whistle, you should be able to follow with one of four signals. All right? And they're called primary signals. Start of the game, try. Penalty, free kick, scrum. Other arm, 
Start of the game, try, penalty, free kick, scrum. If you can't follow with one of those primary signals, you probably shouldn't have blown your whistle. So in other words, if you see an infringement that you can't play an advantage from, you'll blow your whistle and quickly get your arm out to follow up. All right? And that way, the boys and girls are in tune with you, they know what's happening. And that primary signal tells people who's getting the ball and in what form. So if you put your arm out there, that team is getting the ball in the form of a scrum. That team is getting the ball in the form of a penalty. So everyone knows, and that's what's really important. Then there are all those other signals that tell everyone what it was for. All right? So penalty, off your feet. Penalty, offside. Scrum, knock on. So there are lots of those. All right, so if you want to learn more signals, you can go to the World Rugby website, go in there, look at all the laws, and all those signals are there for you. All right? So some of the key ones you probably use in junior rugby will look like this. Knock on, forward pass, offside, not releasing the ball, not releasing the tackler, hands in the ruck, so, so are some of your main ones, and then there's a whole lot of others that you may draw on, but they'll be the key ones probably that you use for most um, of your decisions. All right, so if you can add those secondary signals, then you've completed your communication picture. You don't need to say a lot once you've blown the whistle and signal. Um, so something like this might be good. Number 13, knock on. Right, that's plenty. Or <coughs> number seven, offside. And that's plenty. People know exactly what's happening. All right, you don't need to talk a whole lot after, unless it's a 50 50 type situation where there's some confusion. All right, but where the voice is really important is on the run. So all those proactive verbal cues which are gonna help the boys and girls keep the game going. So stay back, roll out, let her go, hands off, release. All those proactive calls that you're familiar with, keep that going as much as possible. And it's the same as your advantage call. Advantage, play it out, keep going. Encourage the boys and girls, and you'll find that if you do that, they'll cue off you and really keep that game alive. If you can't get a response from them, you can always blow your whistle, come back, and um, if it's for infringement, scrum penalty, or whatever it might be, okay? So lots of voice on the run, and the boys and girls will queue off that really nicely. So that's game management. Whistle, signals, voice on the run, short explanation, post blowing the whistle. Variety in the whistle, right? good sharp clear signals. And what that does also, it keeps the sideline informed of what you're doing. And if you're good in that area, you'll find the sideline can be pretty forgiving. It's referees that have poor whistle, their signals are unclear, their voice is not in tune with what's going on in the game. That brings the sideline into the game and it makes it a little bit tougher. Which brings us to sideline management. Please don't be tempted to interact with the sideline if you're getting a bit of verbal from there um, stay in tune with the game stay in touch with them however if you are being affected by the sideline because of the verbal banter that may be going on then the boys and girls most certainly will as well so it's really important then we address that because if you're affected and the boys and girls are that's a situation that we need to address so in the first instance we go through the coach of the team and see if they can help out with the parents and guardians of that team. Um, and hopefully that's good to go. If not, then you as a referee must deal with that um, at some level. All right, now it's very rare to have to call games off. Uh, we're, we're entrusting coaches and referees to ensure that 
it never gets to that stage and that we can carry on and give our boys and girls a decent run on that on their on their game day. Alright, so don't get overzealous with a sideline, don't get into confrontational situations, work with coaches, work with parents, um, for ultimate, the ultimate outcome for the boys and girls so that they can have a great time playing in playing rugby. Um, the other thing that can help there is work hard. So work hard to get to decision making areas. If you're five, six, seven metres away and you make a decision, you get it wrong, people are a lot more forgiving than if you're making the same decision from 20 and 30 metres away. So if you get a chance to get out there and referee, put the right gear on, look the part, and work hard. So you mix a good work ethic with a good whistle, good signals, and good verbal communication, and you'll find that people are pretty forgiving for that. They can accept some decisions that are not right, as opposed to the referee that gets out there, is not a good whistler, poor signals, won't communicate, and is miles away from play. That's when we draw people into an environment that becomes a little bit um, fired up and, and overzealous in terms of the way they talk to you. So there are some things that we can do to help ourselves in those situations. And if we get those right, as I say, most people are pretty forgiving for that and they can accept decisions that aren't necessarily right. The other side of that is, is if you are a bit closer and you do get to play, the chances of you making correct decisions are far, far greater. So it's for your own good as well as the boys and girls in the sideline. So, in conclusion, a little bit of homework, practice your whistle, practice your signals, be up to play with the law that you're into, make sure you keep the boys and girls safe, all right, and get out there and enjoy it. And that's the other key part to, to refereeing. Don't think of it as, oh gosh, I'm gonna get out and referee. Go out there and go, right, I've got a referee. Have a positive mindset around it, and you'll find if you do a semi-reasonable job, people will love the work you do, and really, really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you back on the field next time. So have a great time. Um, you're not alone. If you have a situation where you're refereeing or annual coaching and something happens, you're not sure, touch base with us at the union. Uh, go onto our website. Any of us can be contacted and we can talk through that or come in and see us. Love to see you, but you're not alone. We're here to help. So have a great season. All the best.